solutions to money, relationships, wellness, and more. Shine a light onto your day and into your life. Power your life with Dr. Joanne White. Welcome to Power Your Life. I'm Joanne White, your host, and tonight we have a very special show. We have a first ever exclusive to share with you, which we'll tell you about in just a moment. But first, I want to introduce you to a remarkable young woman and a very talented artist who began a movement to reinvent the Divine Lorraine Hotel on North Broad Street in Philadelphia. One person who has been a huge supporter of this idea and who is here with her today is former Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell. With me now are both Karen Kunkel and former Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell. Welcome, both of you. Our pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Joanne. My pleasure. You are an incredible, bold, kind of audacious young woman who is really stirring up the pot a little bit, not only in Philadelphia, but with your vision nationally and thinking also internationally. Tell us a little bit about your concept of the Divine Lorraine. Sure. So the Divine Lorraine is a central part of Philadelphia's history. It's also a central part of Philadelphia's real estate. And the neighborhood currently is the sixth most violent neighborhood in America. And it's really great to see uh, what potential the building has for the neighborhood. So there's a lot of um, halfway houses and homeless shelters there. And by turning the Divine into an art museum as opposed to apartments or a hotel, would really revitalize the whole neighborhood and bring both the new gentrification and the old constituents who lived there for a long time together. Not only that, you're talking about also making this an interactive museum, right? An interactive facility and you've really gone around and gotten the support of several people including Governor Ed Rendell. Tell us a little bit about why you think this vision has been so important for Philadelphia. Well, during my time as mayor and even going on to my time as governor, I always wanted to do something with the Divine Lorraine. The Avenue of the Arts South, south of City Hall, has been a huge success and probably should be credited with the revitalization of downtown Philadelphia. But the Avenue of the Arts North never really made it. For a while, the Freedom Theater had some viability, but it never really caught on. And I thought that the Divine Lorraine, as something that promotes arts and culture, was an important part of the component of making Avenue of the Arts North a, a reality. So I always wanted to do something with it, but I could find no developer willing to, even with the prospect of state aid, willing to go out and do it. Then I attended a, uh, as the guest speaker, a Ready for Hillary uh, right. event for the Hillary Clinton PAC, and I was greeted at the door by this young woman uh, who, uh, was uh, charming and uh, um, spoke in, in tones, as you said, visionary is a good word to describe Karen. Uh, and I was impressed with both the idea, the concept, and the person. What makes Karen special, I think, is her, her refusal to look at something and say it can't be done. She's had a lot of people, smart people or friends of hers, tell her, well, you'll never get possession of the building, you can't do this. In fact, when President Clinton was in town, Karen did a wonderful sketch of President Clinton and Hillary, which he loved, and in fact, it's now up in their house in Chappaqua. President Clinton said to Karen, now let me get this straight. You're gonna build, oh, a, right. you're gonna build an <laughs> art museum in a building that you don't own. Not only do you not own it, but there's a lot of controversy around whether or not it's even going to work. And so you had a concept that you presented not only to Governor Ed Rendell, but to Bill Clinton and to Lewis Katz, sorry about your loss. Sure. And its concept is what? Think up. So tell us about that because I think it's brilliant. Sure. So uh, I, I'm always telling people to think up. Um, that's actually what I titled uh, Bill, Bill's portrait with Hillary. Um, and my friend Gabe Tiberino did the portrait of right. Hillary. Um, and think up is an important concept, especially for Philadelphia. We have a rich cultural history here. We also have a uh, three point four billion dollar arts industry. I like to call that the living arts. And that industry really has no centralization. It has no um, cohesiveness. It's, it's uh, here and there and very scattered. Everybody has their own uh, membership or website. And so people like Lewis and Ed and Bill have been encouraging me to pursue the project because what we do is we unite all of the existing resources under one roof, under one website, and we kind of share um, 
overlapping needs and resources and we cut back on overhead costs and it really brings people together and that's why we call it Philadelphia right. Interactive right. Museum of Contemporary so Art. I think it's brilliant too. To be clear, part of the building is going to be a museum to right. the contemporary right. arts, but part of the building will house the various group arts and cultural groups, some of whom don't have a home or are on borrowed space and need a permanent home, and they'll all be there and there'll be a great synergy of having them all together. So things like the mural arts program, uh, mm -hmm. give us a few the others. The Greater Philadelphia right. Film Office, etc. Can, can we unveil that painting that you oh, did? Oh, I would love of, that, yeah. Please, mm -hmm. because it's a first here yeah. and we're excited love to see it. Yeah. That'd so here great. it is, right? And you actually were also commissioned with, by uh, Lewis Katz was one of your staunch supporters in this Pomoka idea, right? And yeah. the loss is great, not only to personally to you, Governor Rendell, and also to you, but he was going to be funding it. And the loss is great, not only for Philadelphia, because he did so much, he was a philanthropist, and also I've done a lot of reading about him, I didn't know him personally, but he also had a sense of, of humor and wanted people to enjoy life, and you know him more than, than, than I do, so you spoke at his memorial. Sure. I mean, he is a big loss in, in many ways. First and foremost, that someone who gave away hundreds of millions of dollars to good causes is silenced. And although his son Drew will carry on, uh, Lewis had some specific ideas of things that were on his list to do, mm -hmm. uh, and they're not going to get done right away. Hopefully, Drew will carry them out. Secondly, he's a loss to all of us because, as I said at the memorial, the world for all of us who knew him is a lot less fun than it right, was right. before he died. Yeah. Um, he had the capacity to, to be in, instantly funny, make you forget about your problems, and he also had the capacity to grasp new ideas and get behind them. And he loved mm -hmm. young people with creative ideas who had a lot of gumption. And so he, right. he met Karen, and within a few short uh, minutes, uh, he was sold on Karen and sold on the project. Well, it's hard not to be sold on you. But also, President Clinton actually responded to you in but gratitude with a letter. Yeah, it was great. Um, both both Bill and Lewis were very kind and uh, gave me some great great advice. And Bill uh, wrote me a letter and said thank you for the portrait. And uh, you know he's looking forward to seeing the progress of the museum. And Lewis was so fascinated with Bill's portrait that uh, he actually commissioned portraits of his grandchildren. Um, unfortunately, um, he passed away before he could see them, but we're going to make sure that uh, his family gets them still. Yeah, and you're going to do it free of charge, which is very special. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. I know your time Our is very pleasure. valuable. And stay tuned, because right after the break, we'll talk more one-on-one -on -one with former governor of Pennsylvania, Ed Rendell. And then we'll be back with you, Karen. Thanks, We're back again with former Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell. Welcome again. Thank sure. you. Sure. It's great to be here. My pleasure. You have this book, and it makes me smile every time I hear the title, A Nation of Wusses. So firstly, what do you mean by A Nation of Wusses? Well, the subtitle is How America's Leaders Lost the Guts to Make Us Great. And most people think it's the partisanship in Washington and in Harrisburg that's choking getting anything done. It isn't really. It's the partisanship to a point, but that's driven by the fact that our legislators, our congressmen, our senators are afraid of the electorate. They're afraid that the electorate's going to vote them out of office. So I'll give you the perfect example. There was a bill to establish a universal background check for every gun sold in America, every handgun sold in America. The public was nationwide was 87, 88 percent in favor, NRA members 72 percent in favor, but 45 senators, enough to block it because it needed 60 yes votes, voted against it. In New Hampshire, a woman by the name of Kelly Ayotte voted against it even though a local newspaper poll showed 90% of her constituents were in favor. And that was true in many states, but they were afraid of the NRA. And I wouldn't be governor of Pennsylvania and wouldn't have been elected two right. terms if the NRA was powerful. So they were, we're against not, me in both runs, right. and I won by 10 points and 21 points in my two elections. And you did so much for, for Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, really turning it around. The thing is, though, that why isn't government, why aren't leaders responsive to their constituents? That's why they're, they're because elected, the, Because right? the special interests have taken hold of the process, and they own it. They own it. For example, we give the oil companies right. $4 billion a year in subsidies. 
The oil companies in the last five years have made record profits. ExxonMobil has broken an all-time record each year of the last five. They don't need a subsidy. The American people, none of them, Tea Party, everybody, right, right. would be in favor of giving it to them. Why do the congressmen and the senators vote for it? Because the lobbyists who give them money for their campaign are all hired by the oil companies to make sure that the subsidy stays in place. And right Special now, interests run this country, right. run this state, and it's a shame. I think it's getting worse, too, as we it's go It's not on. getting better. You're right. absolutely right. So what makes for a good leadership? Well, a good leader has to have a vision, um, has to be able to communicate that vision to the American people or the people of Pennsylvania right. if it's statewide. Ronald Reagan had a vision. He wanted to enact a conservative agenda. He was a great communicator. He put that vision in simple terms that the American people could understand. And then he has to have the courage to stick with it, to not let temporary setbacks cause them to retreat or forget about things that are important. And also not pay attention to all the other voices that are Absolutely. fueling him or her Absolutely. financially. And, and, and then as well, to reach out to the other side, not to necessarily capitulate to the other side, but reach out to the other side and say, okay, here's what I want. Now, what do you need to help me get what I want? And if what they need is reasonable, do it. Do it. That's how government it makes sense, works. Right. Compromise is not only a, not a dirty word in politics, it's how politics has always worked since those men, it was only men at the time, right. met, right. At, uh, independence, uh, met at uh, uh, Independence Hall to f flush out the first government for the United States of America. So it's also responsible. Uh, absolutely. You actually are, you said you're having a meeting about the Democratic National Party and Philadelphia put in a bid for it to be placed there. What are our chances? Well, I think our chances are good. Uh, we had a great convention in 2000 for the Republicans. Right. That was viewed by the people who attended it in the media as the best convention in a long time. So that'll hold us in good stead. We've got the strong support of Mayor Nutter. Uh, he's on board, right. the elected officials of the region are on board, the business community is on board. And you know, I want to dispel some, one notion. What's there are that? some people who say, well, the Pope is coming in in 2015, and we're going to spend a lot of money and a lot of resources getting ready for that visit, so we really can't do the convention in 2016. But that's the old-time Philadelphia thinking. We can do anything we want. We're a big city, we're a major league city, we've got a great capacity to run big events, and doing two a year apart should not scare us in the slightest. These events will bring the city incredible publicity. And Pub revenue. And revenue. Publicity, though, because every delegation, the Oregon delegation, the Iowa delegation, right. they bring their local TV st stations with them, and there's not a lot of news, so they do features about the host city. T to pay for that type of advertising would cost us $95 to $100 million, right. dollars, and we get that for free. So these events are important to us. It stamps in everybody's mind, this is a major league city. We're right up there with LA, Chicago, and New York, and we should be. So hopefully that's going to happen, too. And, Absolutely. And will you find out by and we're, and we're marshalling all of our resources. Uh, Karen Kunkel is uh, going to put together a young people's uh, oh, great. Uh, event uh, to, to help us raise money for the convention. Now, she, she doesn't know it yet. I've just told her. <laughs> you also have been a mentor, not just to Karen Kunkel, but to so many, so many other people you teach at the University of Pennsylvania about leadership. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, I, I teach about executive leadership and what you have to do to, to be a strong leader and, and move the issues that you care about along. And I teach, same reason I wrote the book, I want to inspire young people to get into public life, to get into public service. I tried to tell them in the book, I say, the 30, 40, 40 years since I got out of law school, I never made anything society would call real money and I never missed it for a minute because I get up every morning knowing that I'm going to use my talent and energy to make people's lives better, and that's an incredible feeling. And would I do it all over again? You bet. And you continue to make a difference in people's lives. Thank well, you so trying. much, Governor Rendell. Thanks. Ahead, local artist Karen Kunkel is back with us, and she'll talk more about her mission and her vision for Philadelphia and the arts. We're back, and this time with Karen Kunkel, who is such a true visionary and has been a tremendous influence among the art community in Philadelphia. Welcome again, Karen. Thanks for having me, Dr. Joanne. 
It's actually such a pleasure, and I've been looking and studying all that you're doing here and your vision, which is not just for Philadelphia, although you want to launch Pomoka in Philadelphia, but the idea is humongous and totally international, and it will help so many people. So tell us a little bit about artjohn.com, because that's the first time we're hearing it on Power Your Life. It is. So this is the first time uh, we've ever done anything in public with Art John, and I'll spell that for you because it's it's a Philly word. Uh, John, J-A-W-N, is like, pass me that John over there, or I went to this great John last night. It's a very versatile word, and so it refers to kind of anything that is art. So artjohn.com is a solution to a lot of uh, to a crisis that a lot of artists face when they get out of school. And that crisis is, who am I, what, what am I, and uh, how do I do it? And but it's not just for artists. The, it, the, the concept is so much larger than that, right? Sure. So um, it, it is going to solve a lot of problems that we face as an art community, not just as individual artists. You're absolutely right. And um, as an art community, we have a lot of um, overlap. So a lot of museums are in competition with each other for funding. A lot of artists are in competition with each other for galleries. And a lot of galleries are in competition with each other for publicity and popularity. So um, in this digital age, why can't we have a little bit of cohesiveness um, and, and share some resources and ideas? And Art John creates a forum of conversation for everybody that is in the art market. So rather than thinking about this in a way, in a com com competitive way, it's really about looking at it as a, an interactive way to unite and to build and also to fund art and museums and even go not just in Philadelphia, as I said, but go national and international. You were recently in Italy. Correct. Yeah. So. Um, so uh, going back to the theme of, of thinking up, which right. we discussed, um, I continually came up with the problem of, OK, I, there's a lot of need for an art museum that addresses the living arts. Again, it's a $3.4 billion which is industry. huge. And that's just Philadelphia. Right. That's not right. internationally. Internationally, the art market is one of the most stable fiscal markets that there is. So. Um, what we did is we basically created a website where artists and organizations can create a profile and interact with each other similar to Facebook or Instagram, but it's a little bit more professional than that, so right. you can also do research and connect to resources that are around you. And um, how, what do, the, how does that benefit the museums and the art community other than the artists that are, that are part of that resource? That's a great question. So. Um, I, I came up with the, uh, against the problem of having to get funding right. for a museum of contemporary art. How can I do that? You know, I'm a 31-year-old young lady with ideas that everybody says, you know, can't you just go and be <laughs> quiet away, somewhere? Please, yes. Karen. <laughs> uh, stop trying to get the divine Lorraine. Shaking up the boat here. So I, I figured out a way to um, empower everybody who is a player in that $3.4 billion industry and we're not creating anything new. We're just creating conversation between all of the existing entities. And that conversation I've discovered in the past seven years doing business in the arts is what drives commerce. So if we take away some of the competition, for example, art museums are always vying to get funding. Um, and there's galas on different days of the year, et cetera. But Pimoka is a revolutionary kind of museum because we'll be crowdfunded. We take just a small percentage of all of the activity that currently exists right. in the art market, and we use that to build the museum, and it's based on our community's needs. So it's, it's, it's helping that museum, but it's also helping all the other museums, Existing and museums. it has a unifying concept and, and ability. Correct. So now, when you come to Philadelphia, you'll be able to go on artjohn.com and you'll be able to click all the things that you want to do in the arts in Philadelphia. You'll be able to check out and pay once. You'll be able to print out all the information that you need and be able to rely on the fact that it's it's reliable. Uh, it's not like Wikipedia where you you know are wondering what if. Um, so when are we lo we launching? Like right now? Like today, today is the day. Is okay. The day. Today mm -hmm. is the day. And other cities have asked. Um, for a similar business model, some, an, a website that unifies the resources that then creates the museum by crowdfunding it. And so there will be a waiting list for people that are not in Philadelphia to sign up on 
and let us know what your resources now, are. Now, those, and I think that's a fantastic idea. Will those in other cities, will they also be connected to one another as a whole global feature then? Yeah, that's the idea. So I personally am a world traveler. Um, I know Ed travels like every right. five minutes. Um, <laughs> you know, Bill and Hillary travel a lot. And um, for people like us, being able to access a website like artjohn.com that tells you what's going on in the town that you're going to or the city that you're going to and where you can see local art, where you can see international art, or when an international artist is coming to your local neighborhood. Um, there's not really a list like that, and there used to be right. back in the day when you were a and Roman. They and they had guilds, guilds. right? Mm -hmm. And so this really is kind of helping artists um, and organizations. And by the community, and the art world, and Correct. the museums. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so museums, for example, in Philadelphia, um, instead of being in competition for ticket sales all the time, now there will be a unified ticket system where if you buy, let's say, a day pass, you go to different museums and then it pays out those museums individually. So all, all the museums benefit from this Correct. concept. Karen, mm -hmm. I love the vision, I love the idea, and I like to thinking of it in a global way. Thanks so much for being here Thank and sharing you. it with us. Power Your Life will be right back. Ahead, find out what's hot for next week. Thank you. Are you limited by small-minded thinking? What if you knew, beyond a doubt, that your imagination could fuel your future? Sounds a little crazy, maybe reckless. Well, it could seem foolish, but it works. Your imagination is limitless held back only by your fears and doubts. So let's try a new angle. Any doubt or fear that dares to surface, thank it. Let it know that you'll consider it. It's really a way to shut it up while you focus on your imagination. Dream big, dream as vividly as you can with details. Write it down, draw it, sing it, envision it. Share it and keep your focus on your dream at every opportunity. It's really the dreamers with a strong dose of action and some practicality that change themselves and the world. Thanks for being with us tonight. Are you tired of dieting? On our next show, we'll find out if the secret to weight loss is chemistry, not calories. Remember that you have the power to power your dreams and power your life.